Yo, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. Enjoying your summer, enjoying August. I wanna talk about something a little meta today and that's gonna be aligning your life or just alignment. To be perfectly honest with everyone, this is only something I started thinking about the past three, four, five years of my life. So I'm not some alignment guru. I'm not a life guru. I just have a few opinions about it that I'm gonna share. So. To start the video, the general gist, my definition of what alignment means is just steering your life in the general direction that you want it to go. So it doesn't have to be a straight line there, but it has to be in the general direction. Very general definition, but that's the premise of the video and that's what we're gonna talk about. So a couple prerequisite points just to start off the video, but I don't think anyone's in 100% alignment or 100% in control of your life. If you are, then you don't need to watch this video. I have nothing to provide you. But for everyone else, you and me, that don't really have that 100% alignment, we can always think about it, right? So the only thing I want to share with everyone is that alignment, that whole concept, is just something that we have to think about. Because if you don't think about it whatsoever, you're just going to drift. And drifting is no fun for anyone. So if you can take anything away from the video is that just take that really general definition of alignment, choosing the general direction of your life, and just keep it in your mind. Don't forget about it because the worst thing you can do is forget about it, but you just got to keep it as a North Star type of thing. So in this video, I want to talk about alignment in three broad categories. It's going to be technical alignment, career, and personal. And let's just get started. Okay, first category to keeping your head is just technical alignment. I'm gonna blow through this topic because it's pretty self-explanatory in my opinion, but let's just take two scenarios for most of the people watching. Either you're in school or you're not in school. If you're in school, to technically align yourself, you just have to pick what you study very carefully. So that comes down to the classes and the curriculums. Personal story, but the major that I did at CMU was a very, very broad major. Like You could pick a lot of different tracks under this huge umbrella major, but the classes you picked, even just one class you picked, made a huge difference in the track you took. So if you're in school, if you're in academics, don't, under, don't just pick whatever you want. Pay careful attention to the classes or the curriculums or the actual path in academics to take, and that's gonna do a lot for your technical alignment. If you're not in school and you're working, technical alignment is a little more simple. I talk about this a lot in this other video I did about feeling left behind in tech. And please go watch that if you haven't already. But the only thing I have to say about technical alignment out of school is that you just have to work on the technical things that you want to work on. It's just, it's that easy. But go watch that video. I talk about it much more in depth, but we're going to move on from technical alignment. Next category is gonna be career alignment. And this is the meat and potatoes of the whole video. It's only something I recently started thinking about, so it's very top of mind. So if you could boil down career alignment to its most simplest form, I think at its core, it's just choosing where you work and what to look for in a company. So in my career, my career hasn't even been that long. I've been working eight years. It's not that long, but at the start of it, maybe eight years ago, I cared very, very little about the company itself that I went to go work at. I didn't like do any research, I didn't get any feeling of what the company represented, what it was doing. So that's something I only started thinking about just very recently and it's really important. So here are a few of my top things to look for when thinking about a company. The first one is gonna be top down. And you've all heard this phrase before, I think, but when you're considering a company, it's always influenced first at the top and it trickles down throughout the whole company. And that doesn't matter if it's a small company or the big company. So first, really important thing to do if you're considering working at any place is take a look at the leadership, the CEO, the executive team, whatever is at the top. And that influence, those values are actually going to be the values of every single level down. And for example, if you have two technical people that founded Google, you can tell that influences the whole company. Or if you have a company that started by a salesperson or a company that started by an accountant or a marketer or a designer, but that influence, those values at the top always trickle down and it's really important to remember that. So if you have your own values, 
take a close look at the values of the leadership and make sure they're aligned for the most part. So that's my first point, sum it up. Remember, influence always starts at the top, goes all the way down to the bottom. So always look at the top first to get the really core of the principles. If you only see like a slice of it at the bottom of where you're gonna work, you're not gonna see the true colors of the company. Second important thing that I think any technologist, software person, engineer should look for in the company is the company's perspective of technology. And I usually break it up into two categories, but a company that is technically driven, tech at its core versus a company that's not. When a company is tech driven, a real tech company is selling. The main thing it's selling, its product, its business, its service is a technical product versus a company that's not technical will probably use technology as a complementary or helpful you know, department. So let's do a quick example of that, but let's take CircleCI. CircleCI is this awesome software service, software as a service company. All they do is provide a software for you to help you do continuous deployment. That's all they do. Their product, their business is a piece of software. They are a software company in my perspective. Another company, let's say you have a bank, right? All banks employ a lot of software developers, but is a bank a technology company? I don't think so. So be very careful of what your company's perspective of technology is. Every company, I think every company these days is gonna advertise themselves as a tech company. Of course we're a tech company, of course we're a tech company. That's a really sexy thing to say, but you can't just say that. Not all companies are tech companies. So. Be really clear when you're evaluating a company, what is a really tech-driven company versus what is a company that's not tech-driven but still uses technology just to help out. With that said, neither one is good or bad. I'm not saying that tech-driven ones are just better than the other ones, they're just different, okay? If you wanna work at a bank and make millions of dollars a year and be a software developer at a bank, then you just do that. But know that that is a bank, that's not a software company. So. Neither is good, neither is bad, they're just different. The last point I wanna make about a company is this thing I'm calling groupthink. And this one is a little more complicated, so I'm gonna take a little more time to give it a backstory and try to understand it a little better. But what is this groupthink thing? So for anyone out there that's currently looking for a job, we all find ourselves drawn to different companies, right? Maybe you always wanted to work at Facebook or you always wanted to work at Microsoft or whatever, 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 but all of us are drawn, when we're looking for a job, we're drawn to different companies and there's a reason to, for our attraction, right? It's their branding, maybe we love Facebook, we love the color blue, but there's always this underlying subconscious reason of why you wanna work at that company. So every company has a brand, right? You know, Goldman Sachs has a brand, Amazon has a brand, Google has a brand, but what that branding really is at its core is kind of what the group of people represent. And I think at the core of that, what the group of people represent is actually how they think. So a company, a company at its core is just a group of people working towards a common goal. That's usually all it is. And maybe if it's a huge company, they got a lot of different goals, but it's just a group of people. And psychology, just how do you effectively manage and steer a group of people? Well, the only way to effectively do that is to manage how they think. It sounds really bad, I know, but just, it's a really difficult thing. If you imagine a company, companies could have tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people, and that's almost like a small town or a city, almost. So Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, he's actually managing a whole city. You can think of it that way, and the most effective way to do that is unfortunate, but you gotta get everybody aligned in their thinking. Even if you join a company for the first time and you're not a part of their group think yet, you're not a part of their brand, what all the rest of the company thinks, say you just joined Google and you're a complete newbie. I guarantee that inevitably, after a couple years, two, three years of working at Google, your mind is slowly gonna be a part of that group think. It's inevitable. If I haven't lost you yet, hopefully you're getting the idea of what this group think is. But what we're drawn to, when we want to work at some place, we're drawn to the company for some reason. We're drawn to their branding, right? And at the core of their branding is this big kind of hive mentality, this group think of what the company represents and what every employee at the company is trained to think like. No company will say they're doing this, but this is actually like a very subconscious process that they're always doing. 
one example is if you haven't heard of the Amazon's 14 leadership principles, but they say every, we follow these principles to the T. Everyone follows it. Jeff Bezos follows it. Like entry level people follow it. Everyone follows these 14 leadership principles. And it sounds really good on paper, right? But under the scenes, what it's really doing is getting everyone aligned to the group thing. I don't have any advice on this, but the only thing I'm gonna tell everyone is that make sure you recognize this. Like every company is a different brand. Every company has different groupthink. Before you get drawn to one or jump into one, just take a step back and consider what each company represents and how they think. So I just made this sound really bad, right? We all wanna be individuals. You're probably a young person watching. I'm, I always wanna be individual, right? You just want, you don't wanna be like a sheep, like one of 10 billion sheep, but we all have a sense of individualism. But at the same time, one of the good things, I'm actually gonna say something good about this, but one thing that the group thing provides is a sense of community. Humans also, we're individual, but we always wanna be a part of something, like a part of something bigger than us, like cooperating with other people in a community. And if you're drawn to that, then the group thing can also be a good idea because what if you just love the Amazon 14 leadership principles? Or what if you love the way Google thinks? You just wanna be a part of that community. You don't care that the group think is so strong. You actually wanna be a part of it. This too is also very natural because it's also very natural for human beings, our psychologies, to go into communities. That's why we join sports teams. That's why we join fraternities. We all, we all wanna be a part of a group. And if you trace that all the way back to Homo sapiens, it's the reason why Homo sapiens are Homo sapiens. Because one of the theories is that at the time, Homo sapiens, all of us, we all share that. But the reason why we pretty much dominated the planet is because we could come together in communities and groups and just destroy other people. So other like mammals and species couldn't do that. They didn't have the group think to combine communities, but Homo sapiens had that special power to combine. And that's why we could just destroy everything. So those are two sides of the coin, right? On one side, everyone's individual, right? We all wanna be individual to a certain extent, but at the same time, everyone's drawn to a community. Down to our homo sapien roots, everyone's drawn to a group, wants to be a part of a group. So just remember that those are always two feelings that aren't head to head, but are always present. All right, I talked way too much about career alignment, but let's just wrap that back, try to make sense of this whole thing. But remember, career alignment at its essence is choosing where you work. When you choose where you work, what are my, my top three things to watch out for? But remember, top-down influence all the way from the top, all the way through the bottom. Second thing to watch out for, is the company really tech-driven or not tech-driven? Just recognize what its perspective of technology is. And third thing is the group think. Okay, we're at the last category now. This is gonna be personal alignment. We already did tech, we already did career. The last really big thing for anyone out there is how you align yourself personally. And the only advice, the only advice I wanna give is that just surround yourself with the people, with the friends that you actually want to be around. It sounds really simple, but it's also really, really important because you wanna spend your time, you wanna spend your communication actually with people that you care about. You know, people grow different, right? You probably all, you've all heard this, like you grow apart from your friends, friends fall off, whatever. But if someone is going a really different direction than you are in life, you have no obligation to remain friends with them just because you were five or 10 years ago. So personal alignment is also really important, something you have to be conscious of. But I think the most important thing, just to keep this short, is personal alignment. Just be around the friends that are, you know, you respect in the same trajectory as you. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Just alignment, aligning your life. A couple of my, a few of my opinions. Remember three different categories, technical alignment, career alignment, personal alignment. There's obviously a lot more, but remember all you have to do if you took away anything from this video is just keep that alignment, keep the North Star always in your head because if you don't keep it in your head, you're just gonna drift and you'll be useless. So. That's it for the video. Please give me a thumbs up, like, comment, share the video, ask me any questions, and I'll see everyone next week. All right, take care.